Nissa, who's a yearling corn snake, had been out and about in her enclosure just a few minutes before this, but when I returned to do the training session, I wasn't sure where she was. So I just randomly stuck the target in the middle of the enclosure, hoping that she would see it and come out of hiding, which she did. I didn't see her at first over there to the left, and when I did see her, I moved the target over to where she was. She saw the target, and she's doing a great job following it. I'm working on Nissa, just getting her to come out of hiding when the target is presented, and then I'm starting to teach her to come out of her enclosure when prompted by the target, and she's really doing pretty well. She isn't a snake that's very shy, but she also isn't extremely outgoing, and so she isn't coming all the way out of her enclosure and onto a station or into a shift box yet. This is a few minutes later. I'm gonna do a second repetition during the same session. And she was already out and visible this time. And I decided during this session that I would try to get her to go a little bit further and towards the station I have sitting here to the left. Here she is following the target. She really does a great job with this part. So she's followed it up and out of her enclosure with the first part of her body and I'm moving a little bit towards that station and then reinforcing her. Now, when we start this third repetition during the same session, I start when she's already still out of the enclosure and I'm hoping to get her to come over to this station. So this PVC perch that you see closest to the camera is actually on the outside of her enclosure. And I should have reinforced her right here because this is the first time she's made it all the way to the station. She's actually touched it. But I tried to get her to come forward a little bit more and she backed off. I was hoping that she would return, that this behavior was just some approach and retreat, which is very common when snakes are going through a new experience. They do a lot of approach and retreat. And that's what I was hoping she was doing, especially right here when she started to come back towards the station. But then she changed her mind and she went back towards her enclosure. Now that in and of itself doesn't mean that she's finished or that she isn't coming back, but this next behavior she's doing does mean that she is telling me, no, no way, I'm done with that whole stationing thing and I'm going back into my enclosure and I'm not gonna interact anymore. And that's fine. She has to give me consent to train with her and she just told me, no, I don't wanna do it. Now this is Vac LaRouche and he's in a temporary holding tub because I was cleaning his enclosure. He had been in his humid hide, so I just moved the whole hide to a temporary holding bin. But then when I went back to get him, he was out of his humid hide. And I thought, well, what the heck? I'll see if he'll train in this temporary bin. And he did. He's just such a nice laid back snake and he takes everything in stride. I'm really impressed with him. And he's not even a year old yet. So he did the training inside this temporary holding bin, which he's never been in before. And he didn't miss a beat. He did a great job. I did end up moving him back into his enclosure, humid hide and all. This is his regular enclosure. And we did a second session. And unfortunately I didn't get that on film. I thought I was filming and when I pushed stop, it actually started recording this, which was the end of his session and him eating his rodent. Now this is Bray Tech. He's about the same age as Vac LaRouche. They're just a couple of weeks apart. And he's been the more reactive and the more shy of these two that I just got this year. And so I was just pleased that he was out of his hide completely and that he was engaging with me out in the open. So I reinforce really early here. Most of the time he's inside his hide and he just sticks his head out towards the target and he doesn't bring his whole body out. And that's fine too. We work with the animals at their own pace. So during this second repetition, in this same session, 
I would really like him to come up and over that perch. Now this is his normal enclosure, so he climbs on that all the time, but I haven't targeted him this far because as I said before, he's usually in his hide and he'll just target out with his head and neck. And this is actually our first session where he's been completely out with his whole body. And here I thought, okay, he's telling me no, he's going to go into hiding and refuse to do another repetition. But then I watch his body language and I'm watching his eyes and he's looking back at the target. And what he's doing is slowly circling back around. And this is the approach and retreat I talked about. He retreated, but he's still very curious with what's going on and he's very much engaged again here now. And he does exactly what I wanted him to do, which was to come over the perch to the target. And I reinforce him for that. He did a great job. Now the third session, he got very bold. And before I was even ready to start the session, you'll see right here, he was coming up towards the top of the enclosure. He was looking at me. He was watching me pick up the equipment, get the rodent and the tongs. And so this time I decided that I don't wanna push him too far and try to ask him to come over his enclosure edge. And he's already over that perch. And so I just moved the target down lower in his enclosure to make sure that he's following it and he's engaged with it and to get a little bit of movement from him. And he did a great job. So I was really proud of, of Bray Tech during this session. This is the most he's ever done. As a reminder, we use target training in order to facilitate cooperative care behaviors like voluntary shifting, stationing on scales, coming out of hiding. And this gives the snakes choice and control over some of their own actions and is considered least intrusive, most effective methods barring an emergency. Things like removing hides from over the snake or digging the snake out of substrate or from their hiding places would be considered force. Physically picking the snakes up and removing them from their enclosures if they're exhibiting escape behaviors is considered force versus the snakes volunteering to come out of hiding and volunteering to come out of their enclosure even though they have the opportunity to say no. As humans, we don't like to have our personal space invaded and we don't like being forced to do anything against our will. Non-human animals are no different. Research in the field of welfare science supports that the more control animals have over their own behavioral choices in whatever environment they find themselves in, the better overall welfare they will experience. Control and the ability to make choices meaningful to them can be a primary reinforcer for animals, just like food, water, shelter, and security. Animals are less likely to cooperate when they're forced and usually experience fear, anxiety, and distress. Animals are more likely to engage in cooperative care behaviors when they have the ability to choose to participate or not.